and Mark are with me. Now, Mark, uh, Anthony Davidson, you talk to the drivers and they say this is the most physically demanding track of the lot. What a job for him. It is a physical track, uh, 77 laps out there in the heat, but I don't think that's going to be the issue for Davison. He's a young guy, he's nice and fit. For me, it will be the concentration levels. He's only been used to doing like a 30-minute Formula 3 race. And although he's a BAR test driver and he's done endurance driving, that's not the same as going into a race. That's going to be the tough test for him. Concentration levels, Tony, but um, I've been hearing you can lose as much as 10 pounds in the course of the race here. It is a very tough track to go into. You've got all the corrugations. It's a dust bowl. They're forever turning the wheel. The G-forces will be more than he's ever experienced, as Mark said, in a concentrated uh, time span. And if he can come through that, OK, then he'll get full marks. Right then, well, Anthony Davidson is actually the test driver at British American Racing. He replaces Alex Young, low on confidence and very much out of sorts for the next two races at least. So Davidson in the Minardi, and he's come all the way from karting to the F1 grid. Louise Goodman reporting. Number three, Davidson goes through on the inside. He's got the better line, and he's back in front. Davidson back in front. This is magnificent. Formula One's newest recruit on his way to victory in a junior karting race at the tender age of 14. And Davidson, number three, he knows he's going to win a fine, fine victory. It was handling really well because this track's really twiddly. And uh, on the straights, Carl had more top speed, as you could see. So I had to, like, really bend on the straight and hopefully pull away around the corners. A youthful Davidson, comfortable in front of the cameras then and still handling the media attention with aplomb ten years later as he makes his Grand Prix debut with Minardi. He's no stranger to the Formula One paddock, but the 23-year-old from Hemel Hempstead, who's been testing with BAR this season, is surprised at the attention his race debut has generated. I've been in this pit lane the whole year, you know, and uh, to have them suddenly swamped around you is... But I've been here all the time and you haven't done this to me. It's amazing the difference this getting the race drive get, you know, makes. Even right at the back of the grid, it can make a big difference. So, And that's one of the reasons we did it, you know, to, uh, to get a, a bit of a profile, a bit of an image, uh, to be desperately looking for a drive for next year. He gets that moment centre stage after regular Minardi driver Alex Young failed to make the grid at Hockenheim, his third non-qualification of the season. Davidson's proven testing abilities played an important part in persuading Paul Stoddart to give him the nod. We had to consider the fact that whoever we put into the car was not going to have any chance to do even so much as a shakedown before coming cold to a track that they'd never seen before, um, or in the case of Anthony that he's never seen before. So that did weigh on our mind. It had to be someone who could be quick out of the box straight away and has got plenty of Formula One experience, either race or test. Um, and in the case of Anthony, it's test mileage. Testing's one thing, your race debut is another, and when you've never driven the car or track before, there's a lot to learn. It's not really that long, is it, this corner? It's, I'm but it's, saying it's, it was it's, pretty it's long. a constant radius corner, and it's yeah. a nightmare for understeer. There may have been numerous challenges, but as Anthony prepared to get to grips with the new environment, he had just one mission on his mind. All I've got to do is qualify the car. All I've got to do is qualify the car, he says. When the all-important hour came round, the Minardi was the first car to hit the track as millions of TV viewers around the world looked on. Anthony Davis, and then he will remember this lap for the rest of his life. I can remember the first time I trolled out of the pit lane for a qualifying proper. It's a, an element of disbelief. Suddenly there's an urgency that you've never had in your life before. His first hot lap was pretty respectable, but it wasn't good enough for Anthony. He was on the radio to his engineer moments after crossing the line, looking for ways to improve the performance next time out. We had uh, quite a bit of understeer there. I think maybe I went a bit too slow on the outlap. OK. It's a learning process, these first two runs. What was the high-speed balance like, Anthony? Understeer again. Just uh, the whole balance of the car was understeer. So plenty to think about before hitting the track again for his next run. It would prove to be his best of the day, knocking over a second off his lap time. That's a terrific effort from Davidson. Mega lap, Anthony. Well done. 17.9. Fantastic. Well, well done. You're within a half a second of Mark, and it looks like you qualified. Well done. Job well done. It certainly was. Mission accomplished. I was pretty happy, um, but a little bit disappointed at the same time because in my last run I was three tenths up and lost it all in the last sector. So it was a little bit gutting, but 
it's one of those things. I'm just happy to have qualified, though. His comments and his feedback is the most impressive thing, which makes life a lot easier for me as his race engineer. You can tune the car and set it up. It's a pleasure to work with, absolute pleasure. Job well done in qualifying then. Mark, he is in the show, but realistically, how would you expect him to go in the race itself? Realistically, I think he's, uh, you know, as a driver, he's going to target himself to finish the race. I think that would be a major achievement for him, and it will be one Grand Prix distance under his belt. The interesting thing for me is just to listen in on that video, what we just saw, and the feedback from him, all that experience is coming from his testing, and he's got a very happy engineer there, he's got a happy, motivated crew around him, and that will stem well for the rest of the very Grand Prix. Very calm as well, he seemed. Very calm, very composed you know, old head on young shoulders, and we're seeing so much of this now, all these young guys coming in. But that experience he's had in testing is invaluable. Absolutely. Tony, he said he was nervous on, on the first lap, the eyes of the world were on him, but then he improved by over a second, a mega lap, they called this one. He played himself in very well, and in fact, uh, yesterday in one of the sessions, he had been ahead of Mark Webber. I mean, I think this young man could be very much a man in demand. He had an IndyCar test as well recently, at which he acquitted himself really well. Mark used to race those after Grand Prix cars, and they're tough cars to drive. We saw him in karting with the freckles. He's still got those, hasn't he? <laughs> one of his